Hi there, my name is Marina Newington and I am the founder of Power System, a five-step process to help entrepreneurial women get the clarity, confidence, and energy to make life's big decisions. And today, I'm talking about the four steps to reduce your stress and make uh, 2020 your year to shine. So I'm so happy you have joined me. And today, uh, for those of you who know me and follow me, is my first day of going live. So here I am, hello everyone. Is anyone, if anyone's there, give me a thumbs up or, um, or hello. So uh, this is the first time I am doing a Facebook Live and I am going to be here every week. Um, uh, in two weeks, it's not gonna be one o'clock actually because we're going skiing, but it's gonna be at one o'clock uh, UK time and I'm looking forward to transitioning my vlogs over to this uh, format and interacting with you guys more. I'm doing this because I want to talk to you and I want to um, interact with you and I want to see what you're thinking as I'm talking So and answer any questions that you may have. So let's dive in and today I'm really excited to talk about the four steps to reduce your stress. And the reason I'm saying that I wanna make 2020 the year to shine is because um, last year I just got so stressed and it totally backfired on me. I, um, I was overworked. I was, um, I had some bad planning. I know I love organizing, but at the end of the year, my body just completely fell apart. You know when your body says no more? So um, my body completely fell apart on me and um, my back went out, my wrist went out, my neck went out and I couldn't exercise anymore and I couldn't move and I had to do these emergency sessions at the physio and you know, I the whole thing was from too much stress. So um, reducing the stress is a key factor in everything else. So what I did to get myself out of the situation was first, I took a break over the Christmas period. Um, and secondly, um, I decided that 2020 is going to be different. Now I'm calling 2020 the year of clarity. And I started it off by doing a really big planning session um, to figure out what all my main objectives were for the year and then plan them through my calendar and uh, do it in a way that gave me buffer time, gave me time to create, gave me time to um, promote and gave me time to do all the things that I needed to do because at the end of last year, you know, I got really excited and I wanted to share things with you and I was like, oh, I'm gonna do this five day challenge. Oh, I'm gonna do this workshop. But you know what, I just did not realize how much time it was gonna to take to do all those things. And it's not that I resent do, taking the time and you know, I'm happy to you know, put in the work and create, but given that it was also holiday season and end of term and end of year and Christmas, it was just too much, too much at once. So this year is different and already I have so felt the benefits um, in terms of my levels of stress and my motivation in terms of my productivity and it all feels great now are any of you feeling stressed let me know give me a thumbs up if anyone is feeling stressed Brittany I see you're there do you feel stressed right now how's it going what do you think anyone feeling stressed well you know what I'm gonna give you four tips right now that are going to break that out for you so that you don't feel the stress and that this year you can really shine. So I have some notes here and I hope you don't mind, I'm gonna take a peek at them because I wanna make sure to deliver all the material to you in the best way possible. Okay, so, um, number one, what is your main objective for the year? Now this is in terms of your business, and this is really important. So you need to figure out what your objectives are. Okay, so are you looking to generate revenue? Are you looking to grow an audience? 
Are you looking to build, build brand awareness? Are you looking to increase your exposure? Now, you know, we will all want to do all of these things, obviously, you know, and you can't just focus on one without focusing on other things. But my question to you is, what for you this year and where you are in your business now, what is the most important thing that you really want to achieve in this year? And, you know, what's the secondary thing? So for me, for example, um, number one, I really, really want to build my audience. I want to grow my email list. I want to um, increase my followers on social media. And um, my big objective is to increase my audience. I also, of course, would like to generate revenue and I have put in revenue generating activities into my plan. But my overriding objective this year is actually um, increasing my exposure. Okay, so number one, you need to figure out what your main objective for the year is. Okay, are you with me? How does that sound? Can I get a thumbs up? Can I get a thumbs up? What do you think? All right. Now, my, um, my next point is the 80-20 exercise. Now, I love this, and if, um, if you guys stay to the end, then I actually have a wonderful freebie that I put together for you, which is the 80-20 exercise. It's right here, and you can download your free PDF and get this, and it's really fantastic. I'm gonna go through it right now, but you can get your own to um, do this by yourself at home. So, do you know what the 80-20 rule is? It is also known as the Pareto Principle, and it is a common thing in business. Now, I'm gonna read off a few things to you right now about how the 80-20 rule applies. In essence, the 80-20 rule pretty much says that 20% of your effort generates 80% of your results, right? So that also means in reverse that 80% of what you do only generates 20% of your results. So the big key is to figure out what those 20% of the really effective things you do are. Okay, and those are the things that we want to focus on. And if we focus on those and not the other things, that is really going to really reduce your stress levels. Okay, so let me read a few things off to you. So here are some examples from business. Roughly 80% of sales come from 20% of the customers. Roughly 80% of profits will come from 20% of the products. Roughly 80% of sales will come from 20% of the salespeople. You know, this is truth. And if it's not exactly 80-20 and it's 70-30 or 65-35, the principle is there, okay? Now, in terms of life, roughly 20% of your friends will account for 80% of your positive emotions. Roughly 20% of friends or acquaintances will account for 80% of your negative emotions. Roughly 20% of life's experience account for 80% of your memories. Roughly 20% of financial decisions lead to 80% of your current financial situation and Roughly 20% of your investment decisions lead to 80% of your current investment results. So that is the 80-20 rule. And if you think about it, then you'll see how this works in lots of areas across life and across business. So this is what we're gonna do. Um, I, like I said, I have this great sheet for you here and it explains how to do this whole thing. But the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna look at your big wins. Okay, so you're gonna write down, and you can do this at home, you just take a piece of paper and you cut it in half, right? You don't cut it in half, excuse me, you make two columns. So in the first column, your big wins, you write down all the things that were really big wins for you um, in your business. So it could have been getting a client, landing a client, uh, being published in a magazine, launching a product, um, writing a book, 
um, being on a podcast, you know, whatever it is for you, whatever your big wins are, write down all the big wins in your business. Okay, now the second part is your activities. So here in this column right here, activities, I want you to write down all the activities that you personally do in your business. So that's things like, you know, um, responding to social media, creating posts, answering emails, creating content, uh, shooting videos, having meetings, you know, all the things that you do in your business. Okay, write them all down. So those are gonna be your activities. Now, here comes the fun part. Now, the fun part is when you connect them. So now, look at all of your big wins from this column here that you wrote down, all of your big wins, and make a line from your activities that led to generating those big wins, okay? So you're gonna connect, and it's gonna be usually more than one activity that generated the big win. But client calls, I, I mean, um, networking events, all the things that you do, all the activities that you go through, make a line from the activity to your big win. And it could be more than one or two lines. And if there is an activity that led to the big win that you didn't put it in, add that in. Okay, so make them all go together. Now, look at the activities that actually led to the big wins. You'll find that it's the same activities that keep coming up over and over that generate your 20%, right? So what I want you to do is now write down here what your 20% activities are. Which are your activities that lead to your big wins, okay? And I have a whole sheet here with explaining the 80-20 um, rule and all the steps that you need to follow. So then the next thing you're gonna do after you identify your 20% is the next step is to write down those actions. Put them on a post-it note or put them on a sticky on your computer and have it top of mind what those activities are that actually are the ones that produce results for you, okay? And then you are going to schedule them. And this now, um, this now takes us to number three, which is plan your amazing activities, your 20% into your year. Now, if you focus on the activities that give you your wins, and meet the objectives that you set yourself in step one, right? Then you are going to have so much less stress because first of all, you're gonna be spending your time working on the things that actually get you results. And two, you're gonna be working on the things that you really want to achieve rather than trying to spin seven plates at the same time, okay? So if you're able to focus on, say, two things at a time, then you're gonna be able to accomplish those two things. If you're trying to do eight things at a time, then you're not gonna get, you're not gonna move the needle on those things. It's just not gonna happen. So um, what, do, what do I mean by planning them into your year? So first of all, don't underestimate how much time it takes to create and then to launch. Okay, so I don't know what kind of activity it is that um, you pick to do, but I'll give you myself as an example. So um, this year I am being very intentional about my business. And um, my big end game is that I am creating a digital course of Power System, which is the uh, my five-step program. And I teach that currently one-to-one -one for my clients. So I take them through a one-to-one -one coaching program that goes over six months, and I do that in over 12 courses. So what I'm doing is I'm converting that into a digital course so I can share it 
with more women and help more women have transformation and to get the results that they're really after and help them to solve life's big decisions and get them the clarity, the confidence, and the energy that they're looking for so they can make those decisions. Now, that is my big end game, and I'm going to be launching that in September, so watch this space. Now, in order to build up to that, I have created two workshops that I'm going to promote and sell over the course of the year, and I've created a freebie, um, a lead magnet, called Five Steps to Make You Happy. You might have seen me promoting it around a little bit. So um, those five steps um, uh, to make you happy are what I'm using to generate leads. And then the workshops, uh, the first one is gonna be on making a decision and the second is gonna be on figuring out what you're really passionate about are about the core values that I teach that lead you to the uh, digital course. So that is how it is all intentional. So what have I done? I've spread those key things that I am doing across the year and given myself time and space in order to create and then do all the things that are involved with delivery. So there's content creation, but then there's shooting videos, preparing slide decks, um, making social media, responding to social, you know, all those other elements. So that's what I would like you to do. So take the things from step one and two and plan them into your calendar, but do it in a way that is going to um, give you space in order to create and space in order to promote. Now, um, a, the, that leads me into step four, which is top tips and strategies to make the planning easier. So the first thing I would say is remember that you have a life. <laughs> remember that you have a life and you are here to enjoy your life. That's why you're an entrepreneur, so you could do things on your own terms, right? It's not so you can just translate a nine to five job into sitting at home or whatever, a, a nine to nine job into spending all those hours at home and not being able to do the things that you really wanna do. So first, when you look at your plan, what are your travel plans? What are your family commitments? All right, you wanna get those in first. And those are non-negotiable. For me, those are non-negotiable. I start with my family because my four kids, my husband, these are the most critical things to me. You know what? I love my business. I love my business. Um, my husband's telling me that I don't have my work-life balance right at the moment because I am spending so much time on my business, and I do but my family is first, it's always first. So first I look at those things and I look at my summer holiday and that I'm gonna be with my family on and off for about seven weeks. During that period of time, for example, I don't wanna be teaching a course, yeah? I wanna be focusing on my family. So plan those things that you're doing, firstly, around that schedule, keep it sacred because these are the things that make us happy and give us fulfillment in our life, right? Family, it's a big rock. Now, big rocks are something that I talk about a lot and I shot a fantastic video. I'll send, um, I'll put a link uh, down below in the comments to this video on big rocks, which is all about time management and prioritizing the things that matter most. So the things that matter most to me, without a doubt, are my family. So that's tip number one, plan around the things that matter most. Now, my second tip um, is, okay, is to plan time to plan. <laughs> Does that sound crazy, to plan time to plan? Now, I do a monthly planning session. Okay, I do a monthly planning session every week, every month um, for the month ahead. And I don't have my board right next to me. I wanna show you my board. All right, um, this, is, this is probably a bad thing, but you're not gonna have air time for a second. Told you it's my first Facebook Live. You gotta bear with me. <laughs> All right, so here is my board. Okay, so this is what I do every month. Okay, I don't know if you can see this. 
but I write down, here's the month, and then these are the things that I am working on this month. These are my top objectives for this month, and at the end comes family and then my own health, because those are important objectives as well. So no matter what I'm doing in business, family and health goes on this board. So I have here to do. It's the beginning of the month, cut me some slack. There's a lot of to do. It's gonna look different at the end of the month. And I'm actually gonna do a little bit of a challenge um, for you guys coming up later in the year of putting a board together like this and showing, you, showing me your before and after. Um, okay, so we have to do and then we have in progress and then we have completed. Okay, so we move things across during the month. And this is part of my power system. It's in the O, it's in the pillar O about getting organized so you are in control of your schedule and your schedule doesn't rule your life, okay? Um, and this is something that I teach. So uh, I do it with my one-to-one -one clients and I'm also going to be teaching it in my um, digital course. Right, so when I say plan time for planning, I have in my calendar time to plan my month. Okay, so this month is my number, the step number one, the objectives, okay, the objectives I had that I wanna follow through the year and this is my work starting on them because you know this is the challenge is coming up it's going to be at the end of february i'm going to be doing a five-day challenge in my facebook group that i invite you all to attend which is going to be about how to declutter okay we're going to declutter our workspace so i'm starting to work on that for the month of february and that challenge was part of one of my big objectives for the year and now it's coming up so i've given myself the space to work on it and now here are the, all the individual activities but i had a two hour planning session for in my calendar for february for seeing all the things that i need to get done in february so put it put a planning session in for february for march for april may all the way through the year get it in your calendar and this is when you're actually going to plan and then the next one is i do it by week right i do it by week so i have a planning session every week to figure out what my big rocks are now this is a whole other topic and i'm going to discuss this with you at another facebook live and i have a great cheat sheet for this too and uh, this is something i take all my clients through so this is part of the o pillar of getting organized so there you have it those are the four steps for reducing your stress levels and making um, 2020 the year to shine now, I like to what does anyone have any thoughts on any of this? I'd love to hear your reactions on this. See, Brittany said, so organized. Thank you, Brittany. It is organized, and that's what's keeping me sane, and that's what's making me productive, that's what's making me motivated, and that is what is making me stress-free right now, and I'm getting back to the life that I love to live because the stress can overwhelm you and you can't do anything. I couldn't exercise, for me that was awful. I couldn't exercise, my eating was going do lolly. It, you know, it's a knock on effect to everything. So um, let me recap for you the four steps and then I'm going to take any questions that we might have. Okay, so number one was figure out what your main objective for the year is okay and you can have one or two but what are the one or two main objectives for the year okay what are your main goals that you really want to focus on number two is the 80 20 exercise what are the 20 percent of things that you do of your activities that generate 80 percent of your biggest results let's figure out what those are and then we want to put them on a post-it note so we know what activities we need to focus on. Three is about um, planning them into your year. Okay, um, the 
oh, I'm getting some questions here. I'll get to them in just one second. So planning them into your year. All right. So this is about um, not underestimating how much time it takes to get things done and allowing yourself adequate time and buffer space so that you are able to create and you are able to deliver. Okay, and then you're able to deal with, you know, those funny things that come up in the world. And number four was about um, planning your planning, <laughs> right? So making sure that you have slots in so that you can recalculate and do things a month at a time and you know what you're doing and what's going on. Okay, now I uh, have a couple of questions here. So what if you can't choose only two objectives? Okay, now that's a great question. All right, that's a great question. And I kind of touched on that at the beginning. And the thing with that is that, you know, we all want, you know, that magic pill, don't we? You know, from the matrix, that blue pill, he took the pill. Um, but he wished he hadn't because it showed him everything. Anyway, sorry, getting off on a tangent there. We want that magic pill that's going to give us that solution, the answer to get us those results quickly, right? And we get distracted because we're doing what we're doing. And then we say, you know what? If we do that, then that's going to give us the results instead of this. So we start focusing on this objective. And then you know what? Everyone else is doing this. You know, it's called the shiny object syndrome. And we're all guilty of it. I certainly have been guilty of it. But you need to choose. You need to decide what you are focusing on. And so I'm giving you two, okay? But all the activities that you're gonna do for the year, all right, everything that you're gonna do is gonna be based on what those objectives are. So if you're gonna be, uh, you know, focusing on four different objectives, then you're gonna have way too many things to do and your focus is gonna be all over the place and you're not gonna be able to be productive and achieve the things that you want and need to do, okay? So you have to choose two. Choose the two that are most important to you. Take a moment and really think about it. You know, close your eyes, take a breath in, take a breath out and just give yourself some space and think about what is it that you want to get done this year. Okay, I hope, does that answer your question, Brittany? Does that answer it? Is that, can I get a up or down maybe? If that's good, yeah? Okay, um, all right, number two is any suggestions on how to choose only two? Um, I think that's uh, similar to what we talked about. Okay, so maybe this is about what activities you need to focus your time on from the 80-20. I got the thumbs up, good, I'm glad. Um, okay, so of the 20% of activities, um, once again, this is um, another thing that if there are, say, 10 activities that generate your big wins, you know, what are the ones that generate the most big wins. Yeah, so I'll try to hone down on maybe four activities that really, four or five activities that really generate the big wins for you. So for example, if, um, for example, if you um, are a coach and your big objective is to generate revenue, and you have discovered that your biggest source of generating revenue is to get one-on-one -on -one clients. And the best way that you have found to get one-on-one -on -one clients is by attending networking events. So that is the activity that is working for you. Okay, there are all sorts of other things that you do in order to attract clients, but you have found, for example, that this is the activity that works for you. So that means that you need to schedule at least two networking events into your calendar a month, all right? So you need to attend networking events because this is the activity that is going to help you meet the objective of generating revenue and getting more clients, if that's the one for you, 
Okay, so hopefully that answered that question. And I have time to take one more. How am I doing on time? Oh, I'm a little bit over. Uh, last question. What do you do if you find yourself off track in the year? Okay, that's a great question. So if you find yourself getting off track and you find yourself starting to get too much happening, then you know what? Just reel it back in. Make sure you have your planning session and refocus, all right? Take, take a review, okay? After three months, you can do a review and say, okay, this is what I've been doing. Is it working for me? This is what I still want to get done this year, but you know, now I've decided there's this, there's this, there's this, and rein it back in. Do the exercise again and take a look at it. Do you really want to do all those things? Can you do all those things? Is it going to get you stressed? Is it going to make you crazy? Is it going to keep you from enjoying your life? And what is it that you really, really want to focus on? Okay, so reassess throughout the year. Reassess by month and then reassess every three months, reassess by quarter, okay? So I hope that worked for you. Um, I hope that answered your questions. Um, if there are more questions um, in the playback, I will be checking this and I will be delighted and happy to answer all the questions. And I am now putting in, in the comments, the link to my wonderful freebie, which is um, how to do the 80-20 exercise to figure out what activities you do that really make you shine. So I'm so glad that you joined me and I hope you enjoyed this. I'd love to hear your feedback, what you thought, what you want more of, what you want less of. Like I said, this was my first live and I will see you back here at one o'clock next Thursday. Okay, I am looking forward to seeing you all then. Bye.